God, Stephen King! Hey, this would make a neat story. Done. When it comes to making fun of everything, even the movies they love, Family Guy's the ultimate pro. So today we're bringing you the top 10 best Family Guy movie parodies. Number 10, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You me from the future? In one of the many time travel adventures the show takes us on, Stewie meets his future self. And let me tell you, He's not impressed. This is where I live? Let me introduce my roommate. He's sometimes late on the rent and never shy about sharing the gas bill, if you know what I mean. Did you just make a fart joke? He's a virgin with a dead-end job, light years away from world domination he used to dream about as a kid. But fear not, because our Stewie's ready to lend a helping hand. I must return to the past to ensure that I never have the close call with that lifeguard tower in the first place. When he finally figures out what traumatic event he needs to prevent, he bolts straight to the public pool. Damn! I've got to get to that swim meet! And what better way to do it than to parody one of the most iconic 80s movies? This scene's a shot-for-shot -shot recreation of the original, which is like a warm hug for all of us nostalgic folks out there. <laughs> Ugh, probably shouldn't have milked that landing. Number nine, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Let the tour begin. We all know the classic movie, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, right? Well, Family Guy saw the opportunity to parody that story by swapping out a chocolate factory for a brewery and completely corrupting a children's tale. Is there anything more Family Guy than that? It's all behind this door. Lady and gentlemen, the beer room. Ah, oh, it's like I died and went to heaven. But, but then they realized that it wasn't my time, and so they sent me back to a brewery. The parodies including most of the elements of the original story, such as the factory, Oompa Loompas, and all the eccentricities. Except for wheelchair ramps. Hey, Pat! Where's the wheelchair ramp? Oh, we don't have one. I guess this is where you get off. The plot unfolds just like in the movie with the winners being eliminated one by one. Except our hero's not one to follow the rules. So we miss out on half the tour, but laugh at the plot twist. You've sullied my factory and disobeyed my rules. I want you to leave immediately. Oh, come on. Don't I at least get a chumbawamba, son? <sighs> Fine. Chumbawamba, go! Ah! Ah! Oh. Number 8. Indiana Jones. Oh my, Chris, we can see your genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Everyone's genitals are hanging out. Really? When it comes to the classics, we can't forget the time Family Guy took on the most famous archaeologist in cinema. That's right, none other than our boy Indy. Chris decides to flee town due to his fear of being a freshman, and his family comes to his rescue. But things don't go as planned because, of course, this is Family Guy. Finally, a white man has an opportunity to be rich and in charge. Hey, Pesci, here's a nickel. Say Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia! <laughs> here's a dime. Kill Pesci. Peter decides to stay and enjoy the perks of being a white man among savages, but the natives soon discover that Chris is a freshman, and things quickly spiral into an escape sequence that pays homage, in a way, to the iconic scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark that we all love. <laughs> Just like in the movie, the escape is a total success. But of course, we deserved a Family Guy-style ending. Peter, I think we forgot Meg. Number seven, Rocky. Like most, my day began with block letters of my name floating past the screen. The Rocky movies are freaking legendary, and they've been spoofed and made fun of a gazillion times. And of course, Family Guy had to get in on the action. So they paid a little tribute, not once, but twice. You know the exam's in three hours. Oh crap, all we've done is work out. We should study. Right. As if Brian's training montage wasn't enough, the show went all out with the story lifting straight from the original movie, narrated by none other than Peter himself. Then I promised Lois I'd see the Mark Rothko exhibit at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. But when I got there, it was closed.
The storyline perfectly captures the essence of the movie and is packed with Family Guy style jokes. I fought Butterbean, and I fought Can't Believe It's Not Butterbean. I could barely tell a difference. It has everything we love about this movie, and even throws in some hilarious references for die-hard fans. It's the perfect tribute to the classic boxing film, except for the soundtrack. We'll let that slide. But we couldn't afford the song from the movie, so we used the sound effects from Nintendo Punch-Out. Body blow, body blow, body blow, uppercut, uppercut, body blow, uppercut. Number six, Stand By Me. I got a bad feeling about this. Hey! What are you kids doing? Chopper, sick him! Sick him, boy! In season seven, Family Guy paid tribute and poked fun at the master Stephen King in their episode Three Kings, where they tell three of his most famous stories. For this spot on the list, we chose one of our favorites. Stand by me. My ass. Man, this trip is dangerous. Couldn't we have just taken a bus? <laughs> no, a black guy. It's simply awesome watching this with a Family Guy twist, as they wrap around it with acidic jokes taking the story to a unique and very, very fun angle. Don't worry, if a train comes, I'll warn you in slow motion. Train! <laughs> Family Guy just took that classic story to a whole new level of hilarity and uniqueness. And the way they tackled that iconic train track scene, simply spot on. Oh, oh my legs. Another train! Oh, ah, ah, what an odd, clustered train schedule! Number five, and then there were none. What's a better way to kick off a season than by spoofing the one and only Agatha Christie? That's right, the Griffins get a mysterious invitation, taking them to a creepy mansion in the middle of nowhere, where they run into some familiar faces. It's like Clue meets Family Guy, and it's a riot. None of this makes any sense. Everyone got invitations from an anonymous source for a dinner in their honor, when that's clearly not the case. Now we're here, where the hell's our host? It turns out that the mysterious host is none other than James Woods. Who's back on Family Guy being a part of this epic parody, taking all the classic elements of mystery cinema and creating a totally sick and original story where the guests are dropping like flies, leaving us all wondering, who done it? My God, she's dead. She's been shot. <gasps> I can't help feeling this would be sadder if she wasn't heavy. Run, run for your lives. A few moments later. <laughs> Oh, really, Lois? I thought I might drive forward. I thought that, that might be a fun thing to do. Number four, Back to the Future. Stay tuned for President Ronald Reagan's weekly radio address. Ronald Reagan, the actor, he's president? Peter, you're the one from the future. You should know, ah, forget it. You know what's a classic and never gets old? Back to the Future. And of course, Family Guy had to parody it. What the hell, where are we? Oh my God, this is, this is Newport Country Club. I used to be a towel boy here. That's right, Peter. You're 18 years old again. At least that's how everyone will see you. Peter's feeling regretful about not living it up in his youth. So with the help of death, he goes back in time for one wild night of partying with his pal Cleveland. But imagine his surprise when he returns to his time and finds certain changes. Chris, say hi to Mr. and Mrs. Griffin. Hi, Mr. Griffin. How's it going, man? Chris. Meg, stop staring at Mr. Griffin. I'm sorry, Peter. I'm afraid she's got a father's libido. What can I say? I'm a vegetarian. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so Peter goes back in time again, but this time to make sure his 18-year-old self scores with Lois at the dance. Yep, just like in the movie. The episode takes on some of the greatest moments from Back to the Future, including a rocking climax, or something like that. It's your cousin Marvin! Marvin Astley, you know that mediocre generic sound you've been looking for? Well, listen to this. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around. Number three, misery. Oh my God, Stephen King! Ah! Hey, this would make a neat story. Done. 
If there's one person who deserves to get roasted by Family Guy, it's gotta be Stephen King. This guy's a freaking legend, and they gave him triple the love in the Three Kings episode of season seven. I'm your number one fan. Oh, 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 who are you? I'm Stewie Wilkes. I saved your life. You were in a terrible car accident, and you broke both your legs. I taste lipstick. Am I wearing lipstick? Not anymore. Brian takes on the role of a famous writer who, after an accident, gets kidnapped by his number one fan. But I couldn't help but notice the new Snuggly Jeff manuscript in your bag, and I was wondering if I could read it, then kill you if I hate it? Well, I guess that'd be okay. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! Can I read it while I touch your ear and suck my thumb? Uh, I guess. Oh, goody goody! Stewie, playing the part of Annie from the original story, snatches Brian up and forces him to keep writing kitty books. The episode nails the vibe of misery, but with that twisted family guy humor that we all know and love. It's definitely one of our all-time favorite parodies. Oh, oh my legs! Now I'm gonna have to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair! No, you're not. Number 2. Poltergeist. Maybe we have a poltergeist. Ryan, there's no such thing as ghosts. It's all j <gasps> oh, oh, I must have accidentally stacked all those things upside down and then just forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what happened. Now this parody is hands down our favorite. Not only because it's paying tribute to the classic horror flick poltergeist, but also because they throw in some sweet references to famous stuff. <laughs> Propane. Basically, the Griffins gotta deal with a poltergeist haunting their pad. And we get treated to a bunch of hilarious spoofs. Like when Herbert's busting out the You shall not pass line to save his boy Chris. And they even give a shout out to Jackass. Hey, I'm Stewie Griffin, and I'm gonna be kicking my dad's ass all day today. Come on! Come on, Stewie! You're acting crazy out there, man. Peter Geist is a solid tribute to a movie we all love. And it definitely deserved a spot in our top list. What do you think? Bit of breaking news, a local family is forced out of their home by ghosts. Who are they gonna call? <sighs> Ghostbusters, Tom? No, Diane, they're insurance company. That's just stupid what you said. And number one, Star Wars. This is a story of love and loss fathers and sons, and the foresight to retain international merchandising rights. This is the story of Star Wars. I mean, what else would be at the top spot of our ranking than one of the most famous sagas of all time? That's right, Family Guy dared to parody the original Star Wars trilogy, and the result was simply fantastic. I'm Han Solo, captain of the Millennium Falcon, and the only actor whose career isn't destroyed by this movie. As diehard fans of the saga, the show's creators delivered a hilarious trilogy paying direct homage to the original plots, packed with jokes, references, and even poking fun at some of plot inconsistencies, all in the faithful style of the show. Hold your fire. There's no life forms aboard. Hold your fire? What are we, paying by the laser now? You don't do the budget, Terry. I do. Yeah, including that one. Somebody threw out a whole couch and it's in great shape. You know what? I, I, I know we have a dangerous job to do here, but I'm taking this. I'm taking this couch. Just, hey, just put, put, put it down. Put just, it down. Just drop it. All right. Drop it. All right. You, we, we, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the cushions off, unscrew the legs, take the mattress out, and this whole thing's going to be a lot simpler. All right. Go, 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 go. And, okay, okay, go. Ah, all right, okay, you know what? Put it down. Put it down for a sec. My fingers are killing me. Huh, and they're shooting at us. All right, you know what? Lift it up tall ways. All right, you get in the cockpit, and I'll, I'll just I'll hang on to this thing as we go. Seeing the show's characters embodying our beloved movie heroes is undoubtedly an experience worthy of a first spot in our ranking. And I think we can all agree on that, right? Hey, when we get out of here, maybe you can show me around your home planet of Alderaan. Oh, too soon. Thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and like the video for more Family Guy content. It's going to help us out a lot. Go ahead and check out 10 Reasons Peter Griffin Should Be in Prison, shown on your screen right now. It's freaking awesome, man.